Look at how sick this man is trying to lure his beautiful ex-girlfriend Casey into his home. Under anesthesia and subjected to daily beings and abuse. The story starts with Quinn, an ambulance paramedic. He has a beautiful and kind girlfriend who is in love with him. Casey told him she wanted to have a baby, but after months of trying, she couldn't get pregnant. After visiting the hospital, he discovered that it was Quinn's own problem. The boyfriend plans to take good care of his health and have a baby with Casey soon. However, Quinn was involved in a car accident while on January 1st aid mission. He was paralyzed in his lower legs and became disabled and lost his job and had to stay at home all day. Ever since Quinn became paralyzed, he's been feeling paranoid and paranoid. He was worried that his beautiful Casey would fall in love with someone else or be taken away by someone else. But pretty Casey is still devoted to him and says she will work hard to earn money to support the family. She kept encouraging Quinn to stay positive every day. But this hasn't resolved Quinn's low self-esteem and distrust. He wondered if others would steal her away. And his heart became more and more twisted. He installed a hacking program on his girlfriend's cell phone. For a long time, Casey's cell phone was bugged. But he didn't find anything unusual. Casey went to work and came home every day. At home, she accidentally discovered her cell phone was bugged. Quinn's distrust and suspicion of him are evident, and he secretly eavesdrops on her. Casey's heart was a complete disappointment, hacked up overnight and left home to formally break up with Quinn. Since then, Quinn has been living a bachelor's life for a year, but strong domination and jealousy still make Quinn's heart not dead, silently follows Casey's work in life and finally, a year later, finds Casey's work in life. She discovers that Casey has found a new boyfriend and is ready to get married and have children. He was angry at the sight of Casey with his new boyfriend. Quinn's jealousy and vengeance drove him insane, so he prepared himself well and found Casey. She said that we had broken up for so long and that she had already found a new boyfriend and started a new life, so she told Quinn not to bother her anymore. No sé, perdona, necesitaba saber cómo estabas. Estoy bien, gracias, pero por favor, no insistas. Dame un segundo, por favor. Quinn started playing a pathetic game in. Casey said he came to say goodbye to her. He's going to finish himself off. I won't bother you. And then he purposely turned his head and left. Quinn wouldn't care if he looked like this because he knows Casey's character. Quinn took the opportunity to say that the other party left quickly and had some documents and belongings at home to return the items to her. The kind. Casey did not think too much and followed the home. When she came home to get things, Quinn took out the anesthesia needle that was prepared beforehand. He hit Casey from behind and she fainted. When she woke up again, she was tied to the bed and unable to move. Casey yelled for help, but his mouth was blocked. Even when she screamed, she couldn't make a sound. So Casey was imprisoned for a long time. Quinn started playing various perverted tricks every day after living a life of no shame. She was tied up all the time and given anesthesia every day, so she could only be violated by Quinn in various ways, out of fear that she would run away. She was given an anesthetic injection in her spine, making it impossible for Casey to walk on her own. Quinn told her that this is just a temporary situation to be a good girl and live with me, and to stop thinking about running away. After Casey disappeared, her new boyfriend was very worried and couldn't reach her by text or calling. Quinn took Casey's cell phone and lied to her new boyfriend, throwing the phone into the river after sending her last message. The new boyfriend thought the message was suspicious and called the police after receiving it. He also provided evidence suggesting that Quinn was involved. The next day, the police knocked on the door. But because they were only suspected and had no evidence, they simply went to Quinn's house and took a look around. They asked a few questions, but found no evidence and left. A few days later, while they were having dinner together, Casey suddenly grabbed a bottle from the table and smashed it over Quinn's head. Then he tried to escape and climbed out to call for help. Just as Casey reached the door and opened it, he shouted for help a few times, but Quinn came after him and hit Casey on the buttocks with an anesthetic needle. 
Once again, Casey passed out, but this time her cries for help had an impact. Casey's cries for help were heard by the old man who lived across the street and knocked on the door, saying he had heard cries for help. Quinn lured the elderly man into his house by pretending to call the police. He told the old man that no one was home and then tricked the old man and attacked him with a knife. The old man was living alone. Even if the old man suddenly disappeared, it wouldn't raise any suspicions. After killing the old man, Quinn spent a lot of money to find someone who specializes in dirty work. He paid a large sum of money to have the body transported and destroyed. Quinn took Casey's house keys just to be safe. She sneaks into her new boyfriend's house and hides behind the bathroom curtain. When the new boyfriend came home from work, he attacked him from behind with an anesthetic needle and knocked him out on the spot. Then he poured a lot of sleeping pills and alcohol into his mouth. He faked his own death by drinking a lot of liquor and sleeping pills. After Casey's new boyfriend was killed, no one called the police to suspect him. He lived comfortably with Casey for several months, but Casey never gave up on running away. One time, she pretended to be sick and asked Quinn to go to the pharmacy to buy medicine for her. Quinn left. He took out his hidden nail clippers and cut the rope that was tying him up. After Casey finally untied the rope, he slowly descended from the bed. He grabbed a screwdriver and picked the lock of the locked room door. He struggled to climb out of the room door and slowly opened it to escape. But just as Casey recovered and stepped out of the house to the elevator, ready to escape, in the stairwell, a fight broke out. At the end of the story, Quinn didn't die, but he was paralyzed. However, Casey became his guardian, and guess what Casey is going to do to serve this demon? This is a 2020 Spanish thriller film called El Practitient, which means the paramedic where a paranoid man working as a paramedic for emergency services on an ambulance is obsessed with his partner. After an accident leaves him confined to a wheelchair and unable to face his new life, Quinn decides to channel his rage by getting even with the woman who betrayed him. Do well to watch it if you finds it interesting. Highly recommended.